Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's a wonderful name. My dear friend, do you have a personal experience of forgiveness of sins through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I trust you do. This is Abe Vanderpoy. I am so happy to welcome you today. May God guide in such a way that these minutes will be of great value in our lives. I'm always encouraged when I get news of gospel advance in areas where things have been most difficult. Therefore, I'm glad to bring you a news item today that relates to Turkey. Recent reports from Turkey point toward that country being on the verge of a spiritual awakening. Stephen Hagerman, director of the North American Office of Friends of Turkey, stated that in at least one area of Turkey, 
a revival is taking place among Orthodox Christians. Bible study groups, prayer meetings, and preaching services are increasing in popularity. On a recent trip to Turkey, Hagerman was able to share the gospel in a school for Muslim religious leaders. What began as a visit to the school's library ended in an hour-long presentation of the gospel before a class of about 30 students. In another city, it was learned that Turkish Christians had put on an Easter pageant portraying the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. More than 300 persons attended, and many wept openly as they saw the Easter story for the first time. Opportunities to reach Turkish people are not confined to within Turkey's borders. More than three million Turks live in Western Europe and can be freely evangelized. Most are guest workers employed in factories or mines and often face prejudice and exploitation. Although there are a few exceptions, most European churches have yet to share the gospel with these people. It may be that right now God is laying a burden on your heart for evangelism in Turkey and for evangelism among many Turks who are living outside that country and can be more easily reached with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I have another interesting news item. Some weeks ago I told you about a young Russian Christian woman by the name of Galina who was held as a prisoner in a Soviet camp for teaching children about Jesus Christ. Since then, we have received the news that this young lady was released from prison and then re-arrested again and sent back to jail. Many people continue to pray for her. I recommend that you pray much for this valiant young Christian lady. She has suffered a great deal for the Lord Jesus Christ. She needs our prayers, especially right now. And I would like to call you to that prayer effort. As we pray together, I believe that God is going to bless her in a wonderful way.
I'd like to thank Will Bailey for that outstanding rendition of the beautiful song, Shepherd of Love. From time to time, we have informed you about Back to the Bible's gospel radio ministry in Italy. We think you will agree that it's a ministry with great elements of need and opportunity. An important part of that service has to do with gospel music, Italian gospel music. The producing of such music depends first on committed Christian artists, but it also requires good equipment. This month, we want to tell you about an important equipment need for Italy. <laughs> piece of opera over the radio or the television in a foreign language? How long was it before you flipped the dial elsewhere in search of something that you could understand and appreciate? Did you ever wonder how someone could appreciate that kind of art? I have. Not so much because of the musical style used in opera. Obviously, musical tastes will vary greatly from person to person. But if you don't even comprehend the plot or the language being employed, your interest and understanding are greatly limited. Why talk about opera in foreign languages? Why talk about Verdi, Mascagni, Rossini, or other famous Italian musicians? Voce della Bibbia, or Voice of the Bible translated into English, is back to the Bible broadcast Italian branch. In Italy, Voice of the Bible has a unique ministry of producing evangelistic and Bible-centered teaching for music-loving Italians. The main problem boils down to this. The music library contains less than 5% of its music records in the Italian language. By far, the vast majority are in English. Since Voice of the Bible desires to minister spiritually to the Italians, the people must understand what is being spoken and sung. Presently, many English songs are being used. Usually, they are translated over the air prior to their being played or sung. Obviously, this is poor use of radio time. If the words of a song are in the language of the people, they will understand the message immediately. They will not be so likely to change stations as we would listening to the previously mentioned work of opera in a foreign language. Over a period of four to five years, we want to phase out the use of English music to a bare minimum. However, in order to be phased out, something else is needed to take its place. That's where the equipment for the music studio comes into focus. Our desire at Voice of the Bible is to raise the necessary funds to completely pay for the equipment still needed to put the music studio into use. We're indeed grateful that two major equipment needs have already been supplied, a used 16-track Ampex tape recorder and a professional 20-channel mixing console. Not to mention that when the new building for Voice of the Bible was built two years ago, a large music studio was incorporated into the building blueprints. A number of items are lacking to get the tape recorders rolling. Microphones, mic stands, studio audio speakers, graphic and parametric equalizers, cable for audio installations, a reverberation chamber, and other special recording effects. Having the music studio fully equipped will mean that music can be recorded in the Italian language. Then, the foreign music presently being used can be phased out. Would the Back to the Bible radio programs mean as much to you as they do if foreign music were used rather than English? Thank you very much. You ended with a good question. Christian friend, we want to help increase the availability of good Italian gospel music. This is our missions project for this month. We need at least $10,000 to help our folks there in Italy. I invite your participation. Your investment will be a big help. May I ask you to give generously? Think about it, pray about it, then make your decision. And write us here, including your gift, designated for Italian music. Sending your letter to Back to the Bible, Box 10, Winnipeg, Manitoba.
It's a good thing to listen to what God has to say. Some of us talk so much, we never have time to listen. We are to be still before the Lord and get our directions and instruction from Him. Well, it's time to look together at the Word of God once again, and I invite your attention once more to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This time, we're going to look at verses 12 to 15, and I'm going to read it once in a well-known translation, and then another time in the translation of Arthur S. Way. This is what it says. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Now I'd like to read that same passage in the very fine translation of Arthur S. Way. The great day will make it plain, and the revealing agent is fire. Yes, what is the true quality of each man's work, that fire, nothing less, shall test. If any man's structure which he has reared on the aforesaid foundation stands the test, he shall receive his work's wage. If any one's structure shall be burnt to the ground, he shall thus forfeit his life's work, though he himself shall be rescued, yet only as one who is dragged out through the flames of a burning house. I pray that God will take this passage of Scripture and make it to be important in our lives right now. Thus far, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we have considered the following themes. First, grow up. God wants us to walk as His men and His women. Second, we are told to team up. We are workers together with God. Then we thought on the theme, build up and that is building on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Now, we want to think about laying up. These days, we can record and store almost anything. I've been so impressed with computers, word processors, scanners. I'm amazed when I stand at airline counters and see the way they handle reservations and give a record of what reservations have been made. I'm impressed with their accuracy. And then I think of all that is done for mailing lists, for engineering calculations, for medical examinations. We live in an outstanding time. In view of all this, it shouldn't be difficult for us to realize that God himself has a perfect recording system. The Bible talks in the book of Revelation, for example, about the book of life. In another passage, Matthew 12, verse 36, the Bible informs us that every idle word is going to be accounted for. The word of God and God himself are able to discern even the thoughts of our hearts. And in the passage which I've just read for you, we are told very clearly that every man's work, every man or woman without exception, every man's work, every woman's work, shall be made manifest. And I'd like to start this part by thinking with you about the picture that is presented. The picture here gives us two different kinds of building. These buildings probably existed in the city of Corinth at that time, as they do today in many big cities. First, Corinth had some magnificent buildings, 
made of the very best materials. Those buildings could suffer the attack of storms, or fire, or riots, and still remain very much intact. There was a beauty and a durability about them that was very impressive. On the other hand, Corinth also had very shabby buildings, hovels of the very poor. These would be shacks of very flimsy materials that would be completely destroyed by the first fire, by the first riot, or by the first storm. In contrast to those outstanding buildings of Corinth that were characterized by beauty and durability, these poor buildings in Corinth were ugly and temporary. That's quite a contrast, isn't it? Now, Paul says that the way we live and build is comparable to those two kinds of buildings. Some of us, in our spiritual lives, in the way we live and work, are building with beautiful materials that will last. And although the structure is not visible to the naked eye, the Bible paints the picture of the committed and consecrated individual building a structure that is permanent and durable and that will last. On the other hand, some of us are building hovels with our lives, shacks which don't look good and which will not last. That's a startling, interesting, and solemnizing picture. I'd like to ask you the question right now. As you review the trend of your life, the things that you do, the words that you speak, the way you live, would you say that you are building a beautiful building that will last? Or are you constructing a hovel a shack that will go down in the first storm or the first fire or the first riot. Well, you know, it's bad enough materially and physically to build a bad building. But it's even much worse to be building in our lives in such a way that what we're building with is, in essence, wood, hay, and straw not worth anything. When I read the translation from Arthur S. Way, one part says, if anyone's structure shall be burned to the ground, he shall thus forfeit his life's work. Though he himself shall be rescued, yet only as one who is dragged out through the flames of a burning house. Don't you think that one of the saddest pictures that we can have before us is the picture of a person working, striving, struggling all of his life only to find out at the end of it that he's going to have to forfeit his life's work because he hasn't built with the right materials and he hasn't built in the right way. That is, he hasn't built in tune with God according to God's will and following God's norms. On the other hand, isn't it a wonderful thing to finish a whole lifetime and then by God's judgment be able to come to the conclusion that you built in the right way with the right materials according to God's plan. And when the testing fire comes, your work will last and God himself will give you a reward. I just imagine that many of us are saying right now, Oh God, let me build in a way that is permanent and beautiful and holy and God-honoring. Something that is really worthwhile. Friend, let's examine our lives and be sure that we are on the right track. Well, that's the end of the broadcast. Thank you for joining me.
Will you write us here at Back to the Bible, Box 10, Winnipeg, Manitoba? Whoa.